I move people, literally, that's what I do every day. I move people to help them get to work, to see their grandparents, to, to visit friends. With 27 years as a transit professional and as a CEO of Memphis Area Transit Authority, and you don't have to laugh again, I'm always looking for ways to think outside the bus. <laughs> because there's always ways that we can make the quality of life better for our city and our communities. And I think possibly the world. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. A way that we could transform our world tomorrow using mass transit and technology today to make equitable transit available and affordable for everyone. When, when I was a boy, uh, my grandmother liked to come and pick up her four grandkids and take us to the zoo and take us on outings, and it was, a, it was great for my mom because she got a couple of minutes of peace, right? Well, I remember one morning when I was six years old, I heard my grandmother pull up, and I, and I ran out to the front door. I opened it up, and I looked up at my grandmother, and she was a nurse. She said, stroke. She knew she was having a stroke because she was a nurse. Well, my grandfather took care of her for a couple years, and then he had a stroke. So they moved in with us. And my grandmother was in a wheelchair. So she couldn't, you know, be a nurse anymore. She couldn't take her kids to the zoo. She was homebound. And I finally remember those times, and I think back, and I wished that there was some way that they could have gotten their independence and their freedom back. So as we talk today, I'd like you to remember three things that would make this work. One is equitable transit. The other is a virtual fleet. And the last one that makes it work is a universal pass. Because you see, the real problem is that all across this country, people are in transit deserts. Like this guy. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to get a taxi. He's not going to get a bus. He's not going to get a train. You know, he may think he's pretty cool. He's Indiana Jones and he's going to save the world, right? He's got all those tools, but he doesn't have the one thing that he needs to survive. Water. So what do you think he would want right now? Water or a way to get out of that desert? Well, we all need water, but in our country and around the world, we need equitable transit even more because it is rarer than water, especially for those that live in a transit desert, those that are disabled, those that are marginalized, those that don't have a car or they, they can't afford a car, uh, those that are in areas where transportation is not affordable. And if you think about it, the transportation deserts are all over the country. Now think about a city. Any city, any city USA. And when you think about that city, you know and I know that there's places you can't get a cab. You and I both know that there are times when transit is not readily available. We know that some people, like we talked about, can't afford or don't want a car. Did you know that in 2014 there were over 260 million vehicles registered in the United States? <laughs> yeah, and over 4 million miles of road. And and uh, just last week, the American Public Transportation Association put out a report showing that the average American could save $9,600 a year by using mass transit instead of using their personal owned vehicle. Now, what if you could take that money, put it right back in your pocket? That'd be great, wouldn't it? And while you're putting it in your pocket, you could have equitable transit, which provided more options than you ever had before. Because you see, I believe that equitable transit is the answer that America needs today. Transportation that's there when you need it and when you want it. Okay? But let's look at transit in general. In transportation, you've got light rail, you've got subways, you've got the bullet train, you've got that new Hyperloop. Anybody heard of that Hyperloop? Yeah? You've got the bus, the bus there on the right. And uh, you also have paired transit. How many folks know what paired transit is? Okay, a couple. So paratransit is a federally mandated service that we provide if you are eligible per the American Disabilities Act law. And all transit companies provide it or they source it out. To, to use this, you have to be eligible. 
you have to call ahead a day or two, so it's a little inconvenient. And then you have to, you have to negotiate your time. And then this paratransit vehicle comes and picks you up and it takes you where you need to go. It costs the taxpayer $50 a trip approximately to do that. Whereas a bus costs about $2.75 a trip. It sounds like there's a little disparity there. But the reality is, this is a tremendous opportunity. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, how do you make equitable transit work? You've got to have a universal pass. Remember, that's the other thing I talked about, a universal pass. But what is a universal pass, and how would it work? Well, you know, there's a few things that a universal pass would do, and, and I, I thought maybe I would tell you just a, a couple of what those things might be. <laughs> so, wouldn't it be great if the universal pass opened a whole new world right before your eyes, making jobs, education, medical care, shopping, new opportunities, a visit, ability to visit family and friends, that was reachable and affordable for everyone. What if you could get that job across the city that you couldn't afford to take a taxi to before and you could get home safely late at night or early in the morning with just a single tap on your mobile phone or a word or on your smartwatch? There would be an application in this universal pass that would do all of it for you. Very, very easy. The Universal Pass would have numerous options that would be available that you could schedule right there. And they'd be affordable for everyone. You'd know exactly when your ride's picking you up because you'd know real time because of GPS right here on your smartwatch or your smartphone. Remember that $9,600 I told you about? You put that back in your pocket and at the same time you improve your transportation options. It's good for the environment too because the Universal Pass will get more people to transit which will get less cars on the road and other opportunities, and in doing so, less pollution. But we could, you know what we could do here? We could usher in a new era of equitable transit for individuals, for families, for transit providers, for social service agencies, for healthcare agencies, employers, developers, businesses. It would work for everyone. But listen very carefully. This is one of the most important points. What if the cost of your personal universal pass was based on, or scalable, so it's scalable, based on your social economic station? So it'd be less for those with low income. What if transportation, even better, what if it were free while you're trying to look for a job? You have all the options available and it's free to get a job. So for the first time, Lower income could mean lower transportation costs. Want me to go on? Well, maybe that's enough for now. <laughs> so, hmm, think of it. Lower transportation costs for lower income. Uh, well, we need another piece of the puzzle to make this work. You need to have a virtual fleet. Mass transit will do most of it, and it'll work better with this, but you have to have a virtual fleet. And what I mean by that is kind of like Jay Leno's garage. He's got all those cars and you know, they're virtually there. He can use them whenever he wants. But whether it's a bus, paratransit, new rideshare technology and companies out there, a taxi, driverless cars are gonna be huge. Driverless cars on this virtual fleet will make money for uh, the economy, for transit systems, paratransit ridership will go through the roof, which will drive down the cost. That's why that opportunity was there I was telling you about. So we'd have these new funding sources that would feed mass transit and make it work better. But there, there are other pieces to the puzzle that you need. By using your universal pass, you could have preferences built in right here on your cell phone, whether you want what's most Eco-friendly, fastest, cheapest. You, could, you want a part, of, part of your Fitbit, you know, so that you can build in walking or bicycling. You would have all these options available and with the touch of a button, it would schedule all of it for you. And there'd be a scorecard. With the scorecard, you, could, you, you might want to what's safest, what's most customer friendly, what's on time the most, how well the vehicle's maintained for all of the different options that are available that would all be layered over and with the push of a button. Even if you wanted extra room for grocery shopping, that would all be available. But there's got to be other ways to fund this as well. What if there are additional ways to fund this? Okay. How about uh, 
Government agencies, veterans need to get a ride, don't they? Right? Medicare, Medicaid, state government, city government. State and city governments like to have benefits for their employees and they could automatically put that money on everyone's individual pass that works there so that they have that fair media ready to use with their universal pass. Same thing with Social Security, Veterans Administration. All of those could put that right on your universal pass so that you have the virtual fleet that's available for you to use whenever you need it. Uh, there could be uh, communities of faith, churches, benevolence that want to help folks, uh, homeless coalitions that could put money on your universal pass so that you could have opportunities. There's a lot of businesses out there and employers that can't afford to build a parking garage at $25,000 of space. So what they might want to do is give their employees an incentive that's good for the morale, and put that on their universal pass. So just imagine for the first time to almost all Americans, they would have the opportunity to go places. They could take their kids to the park, they could exercise, they could go visit the zoo, they could go shopping. Wouldn't that be great if you could go shopping wherever you wanted to shop? And you didn't like this doctor, but now you have the opportunity to go to the medical facility of your choice. And, and what if you had new job opportunities available and you could get to them like we talked about? It'd be great, wouldn't it? So close your eyes for another minute. Now imagine one of your favorite cities. Okay, got it? Now, in that city, got to do a lot of planning, don't you? <laughs> got to plan your trip and a rental car, and, and you've, you've got to plan whether you need a taxi or how to get to your hotel. Okay, open your eyes. So what if your universal pass on your smartphone did it all for you with just a tap of the button or a word on your voice or on your smart watch or other device in the future? And it could be done faster, it would be more convenient, it would save you money and save you time. So it doesn't matter if you're in San Francisco, it doesn't matter if you go to Hawaii. Anybody want to go to Hawaii? Well, you could use your equitable transit. You could go to uh, New York or St. Louis or anywhere for that matter. It doesn't matter where you go because equitable transportation would be available and easy to use for everyone. So for the first time in our country, on this device right here, you could schedule your trip. It would be paid for through all the other sources. It would truly be equitable because there'd be additional funding. Remember we said lower income equals lower transportation costs. It wouldn't cost us anything more. It would help our economies because people would have jobs and they would have opportunities. And those folks that are elderly or disabled or, or, or marginalized, could now be a, have a bigger part in our society. They could actually realize their potential. This, this could change the country. And as we think about it, if you look all around the world, and even in our country, we still have those transit deserts. There's more and more of them. And there's more elderly, and there's more disabled. But for the first time, there's a way that it doesn't have to be that way. They could have the same opportunities. They could realize their potential. They could go out and do things with their friends and family, just like some of us do. And all of us would use it too, which would improve transit ridership, which would improve economies across, um, across the nation. But the thing of it is, there will be a whole new businesses built around equitable transportation a virtual fleet, and the universal pass. So if, if my grandmother, if she were alive today, she could have this freedom tomorrow. And so could your grandma too. Thank you.